Hello, this is Dr. J. This is going to be our updated video on the steps of muscle contraction. Alrighty, so I have broken down the steps of muscle contraction into one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, into eight steps. So you'll see that you have access to the steps written out in words, one through eight. And it's kind of a weird visual, but this is what I got. So you also have it visually. Don't forget, you have access. I posted some links to YouTube videos that I think are a good review at the right level. Okay, so as we know, in order for a muscle to contract, the very first thing that it needs is a nerve impulse. So before any muscle contracts, it needs a nerve impulse to tell it to contract. So here we see the end of a motor nerve coming in to the muscle, right? End of the nerve coming in to the muscle. Well, as we described, that nerve impulse comes to the end of the nerve but of course, there's a synapse or a space. How are we going to get that nerve impulse across the synapse into the muscle? I have it listed here as just one step. Nerve impulse travels to the neuromuscular junction, initiates an action potential. Remember, action potential is just a fancy way of saying nerve impulse. So if you see action potential or AP, it's just a nerve impulse into the muscle. But you're going to remember the steps of how that happens. We've got to go back. We remember that the nerve impulse reaches the end of the axon. It reaches the synapse. So the nerve impulse comes down to the muscle. But when we magnify that area between the end of the nerve and the muscle, there's a space. How are we gonna get that nerve impulse, that electrical signal across the space? Through these steps. By the way, the junction between the end of the nerve and the muscle, what I've, let me, I just got so much to say folks, they get so excited. The junction between the nerve and the muscle, what this square is pointing to is the neuromuscular junction junction between the nerve and the muscle. So what happens is when that nerve impulse reaches the end of the axon, that will trigger calcium channels to open and calcium comes in. So nerve impulse comes down, triggers calcium channels to open, and calcium comes into the end of the axon. Nerve impulse reaches the end of the axon, Calcium channels open, calcium comes in. The presence of calcium in the end of that nerve tells these vesicles to go to the edge of the nerve and release a neurotransmitter called acetylcholine. Once calcium is in, it tells these vesicles to move to the end of the nerve and it will release acetylcholine to cross the synapse. These blue dots, the blue dots in the synapse are acetylcholine. So let's review, and I'll just get rid of these so we can see it again. Let's review, nerve impulse comes to the end of the axon. The presence of the nerve impulse triggers calcium channels to open Calcium comes in to the end of the nerve. Step number three, that calcium will trigger these vesicles to move to the edge of the axon. And through exocytosis, the vesicles will release a neurotransmitter called acetylcholine, which are these blue dots that cross the synapse and then transfer the nerve impulse to the muscle. Good. Make sure you review that. That is all in this step. Neuromuscular, excuse me, the nerve impulse gets to the end of the neuromuscular junction, initiates the nerve impulse in the muscle.
through those sub steps. Now we're in the muscle. Once the nerve impulse or action potential, remember action potential is the same thing as nerve impulse. Once the nerve impulse gets into the muscle, it travels deeper into the muscle to the sarcoplasmic reticulum. Once that nerve impulse gets to the sarcoplasmic reticulum, the sarcoplasmic reticulum will release calcium. That calcium will travel deeper into the muscle. Specifically, it's going to go to the sarcomere, which is the unit of actin and myosin. Let's see these here. I'm going to erase this so we can see it from the beginning. Nerve impulse comes into the muscle. And all those events we just talked about cause the nerve impulse to be transferred into the muscle. That nerve impulse then travels deeper into the muscle to the sarcoplasmic reticulum. Once the nerve impulse gets to the sarcoplasmic reticulum, the sarcoplasmic reticulum will release calcium. That calcium will then travel deeper into the muscle to the sarcomere. Good. Nerve impulse got into the muscle. That nerve impulse traveled deeper into the muscle to the sarcoplasmic reticulum. The sarcoplasmic reticulum releases calcium. That calcium travels deeper to the sarcomere. More specifically, that calcium binds to one of the subunits on actin, troponin, and when calcium binds to one of those subunits, it causes the other subunit to shift. This is important because when the other subunit, tropomyosin, when the other subunit shifts, it exposes active sites on actin. Previously, the active sites weren't open. This is like a series of dominoes. We have to have one thing happen before the next can happen before the next can happen. So once calcium is released from the SR, sarcoplasmic reticulum, the calcium will travel down to the sarcomere. More specifically, the calcium travels to actin. The calcium binds to one of the subunits, causing the other subunit to shift, and that exposes the active sites. You don't need to know the specific names of troponin and tropomyosin. I had said that I want you to know that those two are on actin. They are the little subunits on actin. But for this part, just know that calcium binds to one of the subunits, causing the other subunit to shift to expose active sites on actin. Good. So nerve impulse has gotten into the muscle. Nerve impulse travels to the SR, sarcoplasmic reticulum. Sarcoplasmic reticulum releases calcium. Calcium goes deeper into actin. We can see that when calcium comes down, it binds to one of the subunits, troponin. The yellow little guy is the troponin. When calcium binds to one subunit, troponin, it causes the orange little strand, tropomyosin, to shift out of the way. And that exposes the active sites. On this picture, do you see the little black eyeballs, the little black thing on the blue part? Kind of look like olives. Those are the active sites. If you look up here, for example, this is what it looks like when the active sites are not open. In this top picture, the tropomyosin, the orange band, is covering the active sites. But you see when calcium comes down and it binds to the one subunit and it causes the other subunit to shift, that's what exposes the active sites. Good. Now that we have the active sites exposed, we're going to form cross bridges. Cross bridges are when the myosin head reaches up and binds to the active sites on actin. Now that those active sites are exposed, the myosin heads perk up and the myosin head attaches or binds to the active sites on actin. I'm trying to use some key words to help. That's bind. 
there's no movement yet. The myofilaments haven't slid past each other. Not yet. This is only when they bind or touch. So step number five here, the myosin head perks up and it binds to the active site on actin. Bind. The cross bridge is just when they connect or attach. No movement yet. Now, after the bind, after the cross bridges are formed, now we're going to have the movement. The myosin head releases stored energy, and that's what causes the myosin and actin to slide together. You'll see this called the power stroke. Slide. This is what is actually the mechanical shortening of the muscle. We first had to bind the myosin head to the actin. And then, that was the cross bridge, and then only when the myosin head releases stored energy, the myosin head kind of pivots the tail, and it causes actin and myosin to slide together. So we just had step five, which was the cross bridge, when the myosin head attaches to the actin, and then we have the power stroke, where the myosin head releases stored energy, causing the tail to pivot, and this is what causes the myofilaments to slide together. This is what it's, we've all been waiting for. Bind, cross bridge, and then slide. When the myosin head releases stored energy, the myosin head slides on the actin, causing the myofilaments to slide together or shorten. But almost just as quickly as the shortening happened, ATP comes over and it pulls myosin off of actin. Release. So we had the bind, where the myosin heads bind to actin. Then we had the slide, where the myosin heads release stored energy. Actin and myosin slide together. But now we have release. ATP comes over and pulls the myosin off of actin. Oops, excuse me. Now we have the release. ATP comes over and it pulls myosin off of actin. Bind, slide, release. But you see, folks, these steps will continue as long as we repeatedly send nerve impulses into the muscle. If we only sent one nerve impulse into a muscle, we would have one cycle of steps, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then we'd be done. The muscle would just return back to its resting position. That would just be a twitch. One nerve impulse would just lead to one cycle of these steps and a twitch. But most of our activities require a more sustained contraction, which means that we're sending repeated nerve impulses to the muscle. So these steps continue, bind, slide, release. Myosin head binds to actin, bind. Myosin head releases stored energy, actin and myosin slide together, slide. But then ATP comes over and pulls myosin off actin, release. But they'll repeat. And every time that there's a new binding, it pulls the myosin and actin closer and closer together. In those animation video links that I've provided for you, you'll see that. The myosin head, in essence, walk down actin. So with each successive cycle of bind, slide, release, bind, slide, release, bind, slide, release, the actin and myosin slide closer and closer together. It's only when there's no longer nerve impulses coming into the muscle that the cross bridge will be released and then the muscle will relax and recoil back to its resting position, and the sarcoplasmic reticulum will pick up the extra calcium to store for next time. Let's put it all together. Good, good, good. Eight steps that we're going to use. So the first thing that has to happen is a nerve impulse has to come down to the muscle. Nerve impulse reaches the neuromuscular junction. Make sure you review the steps of how the nerve impulse crosses the synapse into the muscle. Once the nerve impulse is in the muscle, 
it travels deeper into the muscle to the sarcoplasmic reticulum. Once the nerve impulse reaches the sarcoplasmic reticulum, the sarcoplasmic reticulum will release calcium. The calcium that's released from the sarcoplasmic reticulum will travel deeper, deeper into the muscle to the actin. More specifically, calcium will bind to one of the subunits on actin, which causes the other subunit to shift to expose the active sites. Once the active sites on actin are exposed, we have the cross bridge where the myosin head perks up and binds to the active sites on actin. No movement yet, but it's just the myosin head binds to the active site on actin. Then we have the actual slide. The myosin head releases stored energy, causing actin and myosin to shift and slide together. That's the mechanical shortening of the muscle. But very quickly, ATP comes over and it pulls myosin off release. So we had a bind, slide, release. But as long as there's nerve impulses coming into the muscle, as long as there's still nerve impulses coming into the muscle, there will still be calcium diffusing down to the actin, and steps five, six, and seven will repeat. Bind, slide, release bind, slide, release, each time pulling the myosin and actin closer together. Whenever we stop sending nerve impulses, whenever we stop sending nerve impulses, then the sarcoplasmic reticulum will pick up the extra calcium and the muscle will recoil back to its original resting length. Hope this helps, folks. There are some reminder slides here. We have the bind, where the myosin head binds to the active sites on actin. Then we have the slide or power stroke, where the myosin head releases stored energy to cause the slide. But then we have the release. Myosin head gets pulled off of actin. But as long as there's still nerve impulses coming in, this cycle will continue. All right, folks, good luck.